so I thought I would try something a little bit insane <laughs> today. I want to share with you my entire Ravelry library. Yes, every single weird thing that's in there. <laughs> I, I thought I would have some fun with this. So I've got some wine relating to the theme of this video. So the wine's called House of Dreams. I just kind of think this guy here with all the stuff around him, it's like, that's what being a knitter is like. You're just constantly thinking of other things. I mean, I don't think it relates that much, but... <laughs> there was a wine called La Froglette and there was a wine called Tangled Knot. And now I'm here with this one, I feel like they were better choices. <laughs> but I do feel like House of Dreams and this, like, this picture here does relate to a knitter where everything's going on in your head, like you're thinking of this, you're thinking of that, you're thinking this project, you're thinking that project. And let's be honest, our craft rooms are houses of dreams because we dream of everything we want to make and there's not enough time to make everything you want, but you can still dream of things you want. This is just me trying to convince myself that that wine was better than buying Le Froglet or Tangled Knot. <laughs> nice crack. Oh, by the way, it's not like nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's like, well, it's four o'clock and it's light and it's Monday. <laughs> I wanted to do it in daylight because it's better light and I just wanted to have a bit of fun. This looks like wine you get on TV shows. Like it looks like fake wine. It's very red. Nice. Yeah, I, I thought this would be a fun video because when I look for my Ravelry collection, I can so tell what kind of mood I was in and what I wanted to make. You get to some pages and there's like 20 things of one kind of thing. So I do know there's a lot of tea cozies and I do know there's a lot of cat things. Everything else is kind of a surprise and I don't know how many of these I've actually made. So my knitting style is everything. <laughs> I'm not um, garments only, toys only. I kind of tried to knit a little bit of everything and I have some weird tastes. Like this isn't a beige jumper knitting the round channel, it's a what the hell is going on in my knitting channel. Uh, so yeah, let's just begin. This also has crochet in. So the first one is this blue red cream heart crochet blanket and I adore the colours. I don't know if I'll ever make it but I do love the colours. And it's sheep, sheep jizz that no one can ever pronounce properly, stonewashed, which is like, has colours and it has nice speckles of white in. But I've used it before and it's lovely and I yarn. It's so soft and it's not just, what it's one colour, but it's because of the white speckles in, it's not flat. It's really interesting to work with. And this is another thing I'm never going to make because it's just, it looks so complicated. <laughs> but I just favoured it because, because of the bunny. If it wasn't for the bunny, I would not like favourite it, but when, I, when you're feeling a bit down or whatever, you just come in here and you look at the little bunny wearing his little jumper because it's even got, it's even got tiny little bunny sleeves. It's just so cute. And the owner of the bunny just looks so happy that she's made her bunny a jumper and it's just lovely. Next is this fox doll and honestly, a fox in tracksuit bottoms. <laughs> I mean... It's, I just love it. It's just, it's a hand in the pocket as well. That fox doll has so much character. Oh, it's a little hood. It's a little hoodie as well. <laughs> it's just so cute. Next is this crochet blanket. I'm never going to make this, <laughs> but I put it on here as color ideas because I love the colors, but I really feel like I will just get lost in that. It looks so complex. So it's yin yan and it's a subtle yin yan. It's not just because mostly it's just like one color, one color, but that's really subtle. I love it, but I do think it will be so complicated. Maybe in a few years, maybe never. Next is a scalloped edged cardigan. So my favorite color is blue. So if something's blue, I go to it automatically. But when you look closer, it's really nice. I just, it's like it's baggy, but then it's classy still, which I really like. So I just came on here and said this isn't a garment channel, but th there is a lot of garments because I recently bought a bulk of cotton yarn for super cheap, so I'm looking to make summer clothes. So this long-sleeved jacket cardigan thing, 
I just think that it looks so nice in summer over a dress. I just love it. So this pattern is by For The Frills and all her patterns are free. They're so good. And this is just a little cute crop top, which I love the ties at the top. So I would never knit a dress, but I would definitely, definitely crochet a dress. And I love this. And it's based off that famous strawberry dress that I was going about. I just think, yes, I would look amazing in that. <laughs> I'm really into um, crocheters copying designer clothes. Like, I love that so much. Okay, so this next one was when I first bought the cotton yarn. And now I'm looking at it like it's so 2000s. I'm, I know that's a trend now, but I was like 10, 12, 13 in the 2000s. And the 2000s was the worst era for fashion. And I can't believe it's coming back. <laughs> I'm only 32, but that makes me feel so old. 2000s was just, no. So this next one I've actually started making. It's just a crochet front and like ties at the back. And I just think by itself or over a dress, bikini in summer would, would be really nice. And it only uses two balls of the cotton yarn. I got 10 balls of the cotton yarn. <laughs> I do have plans for all balls though. So it's, it's all good. So this is the next one by For The Fields as well. It's just a really simple vest top. I add all these garments into my library and I'm like, will I actually make a garment? I get really bored making clothes. It's just, <sighs> but then the finished product, it's, it's a love-hate relationship making garments. And this is just so simple, but so effective. I love this. And then this is something I'm never ever going to attempt to make, but it's amazing. But to be fair, like I do live in this shawl. I live in the country and by the sea. So part of me is like, you have to make it. It's just, it looks so amazing. And the detailing, it's so intricate. And it's, well, the more I look at it, the more I think I have to make this. And I don't know why I have this in here. It's just a classic ribbed scarf. But to be fair, sometimes you're doing patterns for the most basic thing. Speaking of patterns for the most basic thing, here's a granny stripe blanket. <laughs> okay, this I love. It's a little patchwork heart. And obviously you can do it in any color. I, do, I love that. It, it really is like patchwork sewing, like scrappy fabric sewing. I love that. Sometimes when you go for your library, you're like, why did I add this? <laughs> what mood was I in? I do not like this and I'm looking at it. It's just a bit, no. So this I love, it's just a granny stitch skirt, but it, it's the thing I love about crochet, especially the granny stitch and granny squares is, it's just such a simple stitch, but you can make so many things of it and it's so effective. And I feel like even though it's like yarn, I feel like that you could wear that all through the year. So in summer you could wear it without tights, and like flip flops whatever and then in winter you can like proper cozy it up with thick tights and boots i just love that okay so this one is something i've never knit before but it's the hexi puff so they're knit with sock yarn usually and the little diamonds and the 3d not by stuffing they're 3d because you fold them over and they usually like involve a few color changes so the yarn that you use a color change for like stuffs it so it becomes like a 3d hexy puff thing i just love the little house and the sheep and the little deer and i don't know what i'm going to do with these but i just think it would be cool it would make really really nice bunting i think okay this i have the yarn for so I love Wes Anderson and this is a Steve Zizou hat. Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou, everyone's got a red hat and every person's red hat is a little bit different. But this is a hat for Steve Zizou, so it's just a basic knit one pearl one to create a stretch, so it fits all head sizes. I was so into making it, I got the yarn and then it came and I just haven't bothered, but I need to make this. <laughs> Another Wes Anderson one, which is the Grand Budapest Hotel which is like an intarsia pattern, which you can turn into anything really. Um, but this is a pattern for a cushion cover. Something I know I'm never ever going to make, but oh my God, how amazing cat socks. So it's mushrooms at night in a hat. This is the Enid Snood. The show was awful. 
But the crochet snoods were cool. I mean, it was awful, but I watched every single episode while knitting because, you know, you just do. <laughs> so when Wednesday got it, I was like, oh my God, she's crocheted in black. That is, that means so much. And then she used a snood as like a rope. And I was so annoyed. Rude. Page one, done. <laughs> Next is this Saturday Shrug. I'm not sure if I added this because of the colours or because I'm actually going to make it. But now I look at it, I don't think I want to make it. I think I saved it because of the colours. Yes, definitely. This was inspiration for my Stephen West shawl, the red and navy. I just think they look perfect together. I feel like this pattern would be like, eh, to eh. <laughs> so that was definitely a colour choice. However, this next one was definitely not a colour choice and is definitely something I'm going to make. A pizza jumper and it's crochet, so it'd be well easy. I have to make this. This is another one where the, the designer looks so happy and that makes me happy. <laughs> okay, so this, I actually have the pattern for this. It just seems boring. But then I think if I do it in fun colours, I kind of bought it as like a panic last, I must make something, I can't think of anything to make and then I bought it and I was like oh, but I think if I do like a fun colour it will work. This is really cool, it's so simple, I have yet to do the seashell crochet stitch but I think this would be the perfect like practice because it's so cute. I'm not sure about these because they're socks but it's crochet socks. I just love the spiral on the heel. This is what I'm on about. You just add things and you'd think, I'm never going to make that. <laughs> but they're nice to look at, but then you feel bad for not making them and think, I should just get rid of them off my library. But then I look at them and I'm like, well, they're baggy socks, they're not fitted, and it's crochet, so it might be okay. It might be quite easy. So this is another Father Frills pattern, but she is just, if you're a beginner crochet at thinking clothes are way too complex, she is really good. She has really, really simple patterns. I did start making one of her patterns, a countryside cardigan, and guess what? I got bored and it's just not existing in the world anymore. <laughs> this next one is for colour and for the pattern. So from afar, it looks like it's just granny squares, but it's got like bobbles on it, like the bobble stitch. So if I was to make this, I would just copy everything about it. I love the colour so much. Oh, guess what? Another cat sock. <laughs> this is well complex. Look at that heel. Never gonna make it, but it's cats. So this was added around Christmas time. It's the bow by Petite Knit, and I like her patterns because she uses garter stitch, and most designers kind of don't use garter stitch. I think garter stitch is like a beginner stitch that once you learn how to knit, you kind of leave behind. But garter stitch is lovely. It's like bumpy. It's great texture, it's squishy, it's stretchy, yeah. So I was going to make this Christmas, but I didn't because you don't. You're never on time for making things. Oh, <laughs> these are something, again, I would never make. There's a pattern here, isn't there? There's a lot of things I'm never going to make. <laughs> but it's nice looking for loads of knitted things. So these are like socks on socks. I mean, you just have to like these. This is a little headband which I love. Because of my short hair, I really, really suit headbands. There's a weird thing with me with headbands. Pfft. Basically, brain surgery, hide scar with headbands. Now I'm trying to reclaim them. It's not really working. I think now we're onto my garter stitch obsession. So these are garter stitch mitts, which like chunky garter stitch, that would be so nice. Okay, so this is a cap for Nessa's mother and I'm really obsessed with bonnets. I've wanted to make one for so long, but I never have. And now it's almost spring. <sighs> okay, so this is gorgeous. This is basically a little scarf flare, but using mohair, just mohair. Like I have mohair and it's so thin. I'm like, what do you even do with that? And this I love because it's called Knitting Badge Neckerchief. And it's just a little tiny little, like, scarf that scouts and girl scouts and boy scouts would wear. And you would get your knitting badge for. And it's just cute and simple. And yeah, I love this. Oh yes, here's some more garter stitch bits. 
The mitts are on here because we moved to this house in October and it's like almost 100 years old and it's very cold. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna make myself some fingerless mitts. And guess what? I never have, never did. And now it's almost spring. <laughs> so this is a crochet hood, which I love. I just think, yes. <laughs> okay, we're onto the hoods now. So <laughs> this is, I mean, it's a hood, crochet hood. These are good because they're like balaclavas, but less constricting. You've got like a lot more room to move your head. I do not want to make a balaclava, but the hoods you kind of can get away with a bit. So here's another hood, but look at those pockets. Big, deep, usually on knitted garment. Knitted. Usually on knitted garments, the pockets like a, is in like a little square that's added on separately. It just looks really cozy that. Here's another hood. <laughs> We've gone from like the mitts to the hoods, so you can definitely tell I was very cold. So we're away from the hoods now, you'll be happy to know. We're onto the 1898 hat. So it's a hat, you knit the headband first and then you make the hat part. And you don't have to knit the hat, you can make the headband and not the hat part. I must have been feeling brave when I added these because this is the most boring pattern I've ever seen. <laughs> it's just socks, not even fun socks. So this is a neem shawl and I know this shawl because it's like a historic, um, wrap around thing. I'm not sure whether to include Christmas stuff because yeah let's include it because when it's Christmas time I think I spend more time looking for things to make than actually making Christmas things. <laughs> so Christmas star, star placemats, Christmas mandala placemat, Christmas tree hat for a cat. Okay we're off the Christmas, that's not that many. We're only on page two, there's probably more to come. And we're back onto the fingerless gloves again so here's these pink basic basic crochet ones which why didn't i make them next is these hit to be square wrist warmers which again why didn't i make another hood <laughs> and again the wednesday vest i mean everyone goes on about the show but like the fashion in that show was pretty good oh so i mentioned the enid snood the really pink one and i've added the wednesday snood the black and white one that she destroyed and was very ungrateful for so next is a little cheeky hamster, like, look at his cheeks. So this is Grandpa's sweater vest, which I think they just work with anything, like in winter, in spring, in summer when it's a bit chilly. And next is Alec the rabbit. Like, I love the big flappy ears and the little tweed scarf. And next is Cardigan Lady. Uh, again, I'm not gonna make that. Don't know why it's there. Probably because of the sleeves. However, the next one, Cardigan fur cone, yes please. Those sleeves are better than the previous sleeves, aren't they? Once I've finished editing this video, I'm going to go back and get rid of a lot of my patterns on Ravelry and actually have ones that I'm going to make. Might include the, the cat socks still because they're just nice to look at. So this pattern isn't available, but you find that on Ravelry a lot. Like there's a lot of patterns that you just can't seem to see, but they're still on there. Like they're from books or they're from magazines, but I knew that when I favorite this because I added it for the colors. I love the different color sleeves. I love the different color ribbing. I love the different color body panels and the wood buttons. It's like proper. And then the granny square pockets, it's just like perfect. I mean, it's another thing that I'm going to copy the colors for exactly because you can find a basic cardigan that looks like that and just use the colors. And next is this. So when I've done granny squares, I've only ever done like four millimeters. But then on Instagram, I saw someone doing granny squares with like, with like chunky yarn. I was like, oh my God, that looks so... It was quite weird at first. I was like, that's not normal. And then the more I watched it, I was like, oh, that looks very squishy and nice. This is a cardigan that's like chunky knit. It just really works because it's got one, two, three. It's only got four rounds, but the squares are massive. So it'd be really, really fast to make because, you know, garment making, blah. I don't think... I think I was trying to get out of my comfort zone a bit. And quite basic when it comes to crochet stitches. I can do granny square, half double crochet, I can do basic things. I can't do like seashell and dragon stitch and all those other ones. So I think this is a way of me getting into other stitches. And again with the sleeves, I love big sleeves and the big buttons, that's very nice. So I was in my cardigan phase at this point. Next is this granny cardigan, which is like, it's just, I love the massive black border. I do think I would make this and copy the colors again. And because it's granny squares, usually granny square cardigans are like granny square, granny square, like they're all granny squares and there's no break. But this has the break of color. It really works. 
And the black little part of the granny square really, really makes the black thick ribbon work. So this next one is free. It's a campfire cardigan and she gives you how to make it shorter, how to make it longer. It's very, very good pattern. The thing about buying patterns is you don't know it's a good pattern until you buy it. And then if you buy it and you're like, oh, it's an awful pattern. So I find the free patterns are more detailed because of that reason. More mittens. I will make mittens one day, I promise. But now it's spring, <laughs> I'm not going to. Oh, okay, yes, this stitch or slice rug. <laughs> I just have to make that. So you could do lemon or you could do apple and you could like embroider or crochet little black things on to make it look like pips. And oh my God. So at the beginning of this video, I said this is not a garment beige channel and this just proves it because I am going to make this peanut the hamster rug. <laughs> it's just perfect. Look at his little hair and his little tail. I love hamsters and I need to have this in my house. Okay, this scrappy rug looks amazing. It's five DKs held together on a chunky crochet hook and it really works. More mittens. These ones are a bit funkier to be fair. This is crochet fair aisle, which I really want to try. So that's okay that they're there. Dead simple fingerless mittens. I was really, really on a theme, wasn't I? Oh my God. Cuffed fingerless gloves. Fine, easy fit fingertip gloves. Agnes gloves. To be fair, they're interesting because they have like fingers on and the cuff is cool. More gloves. To be fair, they wouldn't take very long to make. Why didn't I make them? Okay, these are gloves, but they're paws, cat paws. So yes, I have to make them. You'll be glad to know we're off the gloves. This is Sophie Shaw, which I've made, which I'm quite pleased of because I have made hardly anything in my Ravelry library. This looks really simple, but so effective because the granny squares on a diagonal slant, it really makes it like look unique. These I love. These are just like knit little bags, which are just so cute. And they have an I-card drawstring. It's like, yes, yes, please. This is a house sampler. So I really, really want to get into Intarsia. I added this and thought, yeah, I'm gonna do that tomorrow. And no, I didn't. So this is bunting, but not your normal bunting. It's it's Intarsia colour at bunting and it's part of a yarn bomb, which I love. I mean, I don't know why this is here. Was I feeling, I don't know why that's there. <laughs> okay, I know this is here because that is beautiful. And then this is here because why not make an, my initial knitted? I've done it cross stitch of my logo, so yes, I must make a knitted one. This is basically just a garter stitch blanket, but I added it because I can't work out measurements for blankets at all, unless they're granny square sewn together. And this, I love this so much. This, I just have to make this and hang it in my kitchen. <laughs> this is creeping me out now. I don't like it. The eyes are just, no, Mr. Octopus, no. Next is Loman hat. It's got this gorgeous little cut at the back, so you can actually move your head because when you think about hats, they are quite constricting at the back. Next, I just have to make this because, oh my God, why not? Death hat. Oh, you'll never guess. Here's some more mittens. These ones are fills. <laughs> yes, I have to make these. <laughs> and this I added because it's crochet, so it would be simple. I can't do the big, like at the beginning, I showed you the blue and pink yin yang and that is way complex. So I think this Eye of the Storm Square was my way of like trying to become more of an advanced crocheter. And okay, these are socks, but they're chunky stockings for Christmas. So they will, they, they'll be easy. And I love the gingerbread one so much. A ketchup bottle pillow, because why not? A bobble sheet pillow. It's massive. It takes like five balls of yarn. It's really, really big. So this was another idea for my yarn advent calendar, log cabin square. So you, I know this from quilting. I say that like I quilt. I've not really quilted, but I do want to quilt. I do get kind of sucked into the beauty of quilts. So this is log cabin square and it originates from the quilt, which the log cabin is, it's like the heart of the home. And then like it goes, ex expands, expands. But the first ever section is supposed to be like the heart of the home back when people actually had fires in the houses. This is Love the Cold Hat. I'm not gonna make that. I think I liked it because the, di the ribbing's a bit different, but I just, nah. This hat and cowl set, I just like the simplicity of it. I like it as well because the cowl's nice and loose. And this is a hair scarf. Must have added this back when I had hair. 
oh I love this so much I haven't attempted it yet because it kind of daunts me but it's chevron stitch it I think it'll be simple because it's only two it's only technically one chevron so I think it would be a great way for me to learn how to do chevron so this is pretty basic but I really love the color of it and the stitch I think because of the stitch is quite complex looking it will look more than a basic granny cardigan so this is a hat I was I just done it in the round, so I was trying to find a simple, simple um, hat. I'm not going to make that, but my go-to hat now is a basic rectangle hat, and I'll pop the link below for you. It's a free pattern, and it tells you what size yarn you need and how many stitches to cast on and what to, what length to stitch to, depending on your yarn and your needle size. And then you just sew it together and cinch it at the top, and that's a hat, and they really are amazing to make. So this bramble basket is a more grown-up version of the Cookie Monster one I just showed you. This is amazing, but... The crocodile stitch and dragon stitch is hard more gloves no seriously i actually bought riot yarn to make these i bought the purple riot yarn to make these i think it would look amazing but that is a hard stitch to do i've watched many tutorials on how to do that and i still can't pick it up and this is another hood <laughs> but it's like a bonnet hood and it's not it's loose so you can take it on and off where whereas the other ones you have to put over your head but i just love the leaf stitch design on this it looks it's so simple and the tassels it's it, yeah it's good oh my god these are so cute <laughs> little christmas bears with little rudolph outfits on i didn't know they were there i didn't actually look through my ravelry at all until i filmed this video which i thought would be more fun to see my actual reaction before i learned how to knit i bought a jumper like a really really old jumper that, that had buttons on sewn everywhere and i thought it was good and then I learned to knit and I realised the, the quality of yarn was horrendous. It was squeaky, it was shiny, it was ugh, it's a stroke. So I got rid of it and I was going to crochet myself a Christmas jumper. But guess what? I didn't. <laughs> I should have made this. It's a dog's paw Christmas stocking. I know it's not Christmas now, but I really, really think I should have made this for next year. This is a cat bed. I'm not sure of cat beds because w would they even use it? It's like those cat sofas. I really, really want to make one. But we've had our cat for like nine years, eight years, something. And every time we've got her a bed, it takes her like six months to use. And when she uses it, we're like, it's amazing. So it would be worth it for that feeling. But I would also feel quite rejected because I put my heart and soul into that either. <laughs> I've also got a cat paw Christmas stock in here, which is from the same lady, which, yeah, I have to make them, don't I? This is just a monkey holding a banana. <laughs> this is the monkey section. So this is a slouch hat. This was back when I was trying to make myself a hat and I was feeling like, not even self-conscious, I've got a big head and I know I have. So I was trying to find a hat that wasn't too tight. This is a little cottage vest, which is just like, yes. This is cool, I really like this. I added this, I know, I remember adding this. I added this back in November. I was like, yeah, I can make this. And I didn't even, I didn't even attempt to make it, but <laughs> I've made like, like two things off of this whole list, haven't I? And then I ended up sewing an advent calendar like three days before December started. I'm really, really not great at making things on time or at all for occasions. I don't know why I keep trying. This I just love because it's so chunky. Oh yeah, this is cool. I remember adding this. This is just loads of little squares sewn together to make a tree. So you say, for example, there's 10, there's nine, there's eight, and it's just a simple idea. I love it so much. And then at the top, there's a yellow square for a star. I really love the simplicity of that so much. And you could even not do it in greens. You could do it in like any color and it would still know it's a Christmas tree because of the shape of it. This is a Christmas tree pillow. Some things just don't interest me anymore on here. Oh my God, are you ready? <laughs> These next things are amazing. They're just, yeah. So yeah, we're in the Christmas area now and I have a lot of Christmas things. And these were all added October, November. But every time I see these pillows, I'm like, I had to make them in November. <laughs> That's when I see them again. Maybe I should be a good crafter and make things way before they're needed. What do you do? Are you manic and stupid like me or do you actually make things on time? <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, that's so cute. <laughs> little, his little crossed nose. More stockings, which I would not make in beige or brown. This is the Grinch in a pot, yes. 
I love the bauble on the end of that too, how it's bending over. That's so good. <laughs> no Christmas tree. Do you see what I mean? I've forgotten I've got half the things on here. Christmas tree gnome. So this is my only gnome on here. I know they are like, people are obsessed with gnomes, but I just don't really understand. You can use a gnome for anything, like anything. I've seen a lot of gnomes. Oh, I've wanted to try these for ages since I could crochet. It's just granny stitch, you're on a bauble. The more I look at my things, I'm like, Naomi, why don't you make these things? I don't think, it's just actually good for me to sit through and look through my entire library and feel bad about myself. <laughs> Let's drink it away. <laughs> I love this cardigan. It's it's again it's it's quite basic, but some things are base oh, it's not that basic, it's like a diamond stitch. But some things are so basic and they really work. Why is that there? Calendar cardigan. I don't want to make that at all. This is here because it's chunky. This is cool. I feel like I'm looking through someone else's Ravelry collection because some of these things I have no memory of adding them and I'm and I'm like, oh that's cool. Like I'm seeing it for the first time ever. <laughs> the knitted star, like that. That's cool. That'll be a cool cushion, like, all through the year. Frida cushion. Yes. This is a gorgeous cushion. Uh, this, okay. Okay, right. We're on the cushion area now. This is the Millie Fiori cushion, and it, it looks quite complex, but because it's crochet, I think it will be doable. This is cool. Herdy cushion cover. The sheep's like, hello. And then there's a mini cauldron pin cushion, because why not? And these, I love these. These are Kel Scott and Mel Setter cushions. These are so vintage looking. The colours, the stitches, everything, like they are gorgeous just to look at. Donut cushion. So yeah, I was saying this is a this is a what's even going on in my knitting. So you have classy, nice, vintage next to the donut cushion. <laughs> You go, Glen Coco. These are cute. These are really cute. September knit blocks. This designer has squares for every month or every season, I think. And this again was me trying to do intaglio properly. Okay, this is another great designer. She has loads of patterns for free. She's really good. She has hoodies, cardigan, cardigans, jumpers. Like she's really good. I love this because it's like a, it's it's like kind of like this, like a sweat, it, but it's crochet. It's kind of like a lounge about just kind of like chill thing. What I've noticed with crochet garments are, they're usually like complex and you kind of have to dress them up to wear them, but this is just like, you could wear it with your pajamas and it just, it's just nice and laid back, which I like. Bike. <laughs> Banana hat. <laughs> oh my God, this is making me so happy. Why didn't I make a banana hat? I'm gonna make it. I don't care if it's summer, I'm still wearing it. Banana split ice cream. Banana. What was going on in my head? There's like th there's like three bananas in the row. Oh, and now we're onto strawberries. Strawberry penguin. Oh my god, that's so cute. Strawberry mittens. Strawberry actual plant. That's really cool. Strawberry backpack. Strawberry booties. Baby, but who cares? These are cool because they have the actual flowers that come on the strawberry plant in real life. Strawberry lemonade dinosaur. Okay, we're onto garments again. Boring. <laughs> okay, this photo is quite naff. <laughs> but I think I could really jazz that up. So these are cool. These are baby, but it's a dragon. It's a cow. She's got loads of them. So they're like that. And then when you lay them out, the cow's at the bottom and the legs are like sprayed out. It's really cool. I've seen these quite a lot. The stained glass effect of crochet. It's really, really effective. So we're on day two and on page seven of 19. <laughs> Tea this morning. Let's just get into it. Simpson hand and this I look at and I'm like, I am really like, why didn't I make this sooner? I am actually going to make this next. I think that would look incredible in a black frame. I've never really thought about that in terms of knitting before, just kind of knitting, I guess, artwork and then framing it. I think that might be my new favorite thing. I'm really excited. I'm definitely going to start doing that Simpson one because I love the Simpsons, but you know, only the older seasons. <laughs> Next up, we have this My Dear Bear Mason. So I actually had this pattern because I was thinking I'd like to have a little mascot when I'm out and about cycling. But uh, yes, I've, I haven't made him either. 
<laughs> I do knit toys, but this one feels like so classy and nice. I just don't want to get it wrong. Then next we have this crochet little wolf. I just think that's so cute with its big bow. So I was thinking, oh, I want to crochet a bag. And I kind of did a birthday one. I made a crochet cupcake granny square and made it into a bag, but I didn't like it. So I just got rid of it. <laughs> I do that so much. I should stop doing that. So we have this sheep bag. This is obviously a kid's bag, but I just think that would look cute anyway. Then we have this hungry dragon purse, <laughs> because why not? Then we have this Labrador bag. I just thought that would be so cool to have on your walk, on your walking dog with like poo bags and treats in. So yeah, this is the first idea I had for my birthday one. It's really cool because it's like a drawstring. That is, that is cool. I don't remember this at all because sometimes I'm like, I'm off to bed and then I spend just half an hour browsing mouth worrying. <laughs> and adding just random stuff. Then we have the pineapple purse. Just look at his little tiny smile. And then next we have this whale beret. <laughs> I remember adding that. I remember adding so many things and thinking I'm gonna make that. Then we have this whale and shark balaclava. So this is a balaclava I would wear because it's genius. We're in the weird area now. So I have this great white shark hat. <laughs> just imagine walking down the street. It's even got the gums and everything. Then we have this Christmas reindeer. I just love the shape of it. <laughs> then this herding cat scarf, which is amazing. Cat dog scarf. I don't know if anyone will remember them, but why haven't I made that yet? That's amazing. So I really love the pillbox style hat. I can't remember what year it's from, but I think it's 60s. So I was, I was going to make one. This first one isn't very pillbox looking. The second one is very, but it's kind of cartoonish. The Paris pillbox hat and cowl, like that is perfect pillbox. Then we have this little onion. <laughs> I'm actually growing onions now. I should make one of them to go on the windowsill. Tiny hot cross bun, like that is so tiny. I should definitely make that for Easter. Then we have this lion and that lion just looks so sad. And then we have a cow. That is well cute. It's not Maravery, but I've actually got a cow being lifted up by a UFO and my mum was like, you're not going to make that, are you? I was like, yeah, of course I am. <laughs> the thing I love about crochet and knitting is, obviously you can make jumpers and scarves and stuff, but then there's an the option to make weird and wonderful, cute, weird things you don't see, which I love that so much. I just love this plant pot because of its glasses and arms and legs and everything about it. <laughs> then we have this amazing flying bear bauble. I just thought that's so classy. That would look so nice at Christmas. I'd never seen anything like that, like the giant nose. It, it just really works. Like it's crochet, but it's classy. Then we have this black cat scarf. I just wanted to make it because it looks like my cat. And then this hooded pocket or pocket. I just love this because it's chunky and it would be such a fast knit and it looks amazing. So now we have this pizza pocket blanket, which is like a sleeping bag, but a pizza. I just have to make that. And I really need to commit to that, which as you can see from this video, I'm not very good at committing to patterns and projects. So next we have this dumpling bag. This is a very common bag that I've seen in sewing, but I've never seen a knitted version before because that's like the kind of go-to project knitting bag because you can knit and stand up, knit on the go and like knit and walk. I can't do that, but some people can. Next is this Mr. Foxy basket. So I learned to knit and then I learned to crochet years, years later. And before I could crochet, I kept seeing this basket everywhere. So that's why it's there. Next is this Fox Crochet Baby Blanket. So obviously it's a baby blanket, but there's nothing stopping you from having a fun blanket in your house. It's a little lap blanket. It doesn't have to be a big blanket. You can make a little lap blanket for yourself for like for your lap or to go on the back of your sofa, like just decoration. So next is this Diplodocus dinosaur scarf. I am really into animals and things when it comes to knitting and I would definitely wear that and it's blue. So next we have this cat. This is a brilliant pattern, it's free and it's not knitting the round. It also looks like it would be very complicated but I've had a look at that a few times and it's very easy. It's knit flat and I do think that would be the perfect, I've said this a few times, I do think that would be the perfect way for me to practice my intarsia, but I am going to do my Homer Simpson hand first because it's small, so that would be excellent practice. So next we have this Fox Professor of Cunning hat. So I watched this film ages ago, I can't remember what it was called, but basically it's about a teenage girl who gets revenge on some 
people that killed her dad in the woods and the girl in this film had this hat so i did tons of research found the pattern didn't make it and that was like a year ago i am just oh god awful Next we have this Woodland Collection. This is brilliant. So it's a faux taxidermy fox head um, with a mushroom and a, a tree. It looks nice as in, it'll look like it'd be expensive, but it's actually free. And I have the yarn behind me to make it. I'm not even gonna bother saying it, you know by now I have made it. <laughs> Next is this beautiful and blue sweater vest, which yes, please. Next we have this pot patch colour by Katie Jones Knits and I've seen this a lot and I've seen her stuff a lot because she's so colourful and fun. Next is this Gwen Square bucket hat. So I've been wanting to make a Gwen Square bucket hat for ages. Like many of the things on here. <laughs> I think you could still wear it in spring and summer. I've got a bucket hat that I've sewn which is good for summer and then you could make a crochet Gwen Square bucket hat for like when it gets colder in summer but you're still outside, like when you put your cardi and stuff on. I could be nice and posh and have outfit changes for my head in summer. And next, <laughs> we have this crochet egg bucket hat. And oh my God, I just love poached eggs. It's even a free pattern. There's something so funny about poached eggs, like in crochet. Knit cardigan, which is super chunky. <laughs> Louise Belcher's toy. Burger bear, burger booties, like, I don't remember adding them. They are genius. This wrap top, this looks amazing and so simple. And you can guess what I'm going to say. Why haven't I made it yet? Next we have this flutter butt shirt. Oh, it's actually called that. It's actually called butt shirt. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. We have this kitty cat sweater. I have had that cat pattern for a long time. And every time I do speak about it, I just don't like the way I feel, so I just don't think I'm going to attempt to do it. Next, I just added this because it's brilliant. All-seeing eyeball hat. I think it's designed for like a Halloween costume, but I would love to get that and just wear it on a grey winter day and... <laughs> I would actually wear that. Next, we have these bicycle mittens. So every now and then I'll find something with bikes on it, but then it's always intarsia. So this is intarsia, but it's not a fancy mitten or anything it's just a bike disc cloth and that is what I was saying about the Homer Simpson thing I think I would get that and frame it because it's got the love hearts on it and I love cycling so much so I think I will have to make that this next one is insane I will never make that <laughs> but it's just beautiful next we have this bobby flower mandala so that's a mandala but it's like a really it looks like a beginner one, doesn't it? So I think I could start with that and then work my way up. But not that one previously because, wow, that's insane. And then this is a technique I want to practice. Interlac. Yeah, interlac knitting. Next is Bubble Cow by Stephen West. You just look at all this stuff and want to make it because it's so colourful, so unique. And the photographs are good, which makes it, makes you look at it more. Cardi headband. Oh, okay. So I feel like I would actually wear that because it's granny stick. <laughs> Christopher Bunny's garter hoodie and tiny bunny. I mean, come on. That is just so cute. Garter stitch bunting. Tea party daisy. This is so similar to that heart one at the very beginning, isn't it? Like the colours. I honestly added it for the colours and then I found that heart one and it's the same colours. So I think we all know what my favourite colours are by now. Two tea cozies, but let me tell you, there is definitely more than two, unless I deleted them, but I don't think I did. I don't go through this very much. So I was re-watching Call the Midwife, so I thought this could be one of my tea cozies, this nurse one. And then there's a sunflower one, because I just love sunflowers. Okay, this is cool. A toad school granny square, like, that is so cool. It's, it's, I love the grass, and I love how it's on the side as well. It's not an all-in-one square, it looks, it, it's very effective. Next is this ghost granny square, like, the eyes, the happy eyes. Next is this tombstone granny square. It's it's just like, it's cute, isn't it? It's, it, yeah, I just like it. And gingerbread man granny square. Those eyes are a bit uh, creeping me out. Next is this granny square Christmas stocking and, oh, I love that. Granny bunting, okay, I like that a lot better than the garter knitting. Hoodie granny square vest, yes, please. I would make it those colours too, although black. Eee. 
crocheting with black if you don't crochet it's not like knitting it's like crocheting with your eyes closed it, it's insane black is just insane with crochet then we have this little knitted collar that is very cute <laughs> lol it's a jumper <laughs> it's a fine knit jumper with a not fine knit collar <laughs> you can see how much i never grow through my ravelry can't you <laughs> oh god so this is also a collar jumper there is something about big collars I just think that Evervesson is so out of my depth, like lace knitting and yeah. I should be a more confident knitter to say I run a YouTube channel. <laughs> Next, okay, this is genius. I love this, I had to make this. I've had this on my, I remember this because like every now and then I'm just like walking down the street and I'm like, I need to make that crime scene scarf. We have this random chicken. I remember I was going to make a little chicken one doll. <laughs> then we have these little mice with jumpsuits. So the the thing with knitted toys and amigurumi and things, you can get like cartoony looking ones, but then you can get really delicate and nice looking like classy toys. Like this lamb is a good example. It's knit with boucle and it's really a nice knit, like traditional toy and classy and it, it kind of is very heirloomy. It has an old feel to it because I stuffed it massively so it's very hard. Oh yeah. Then we have this hedgy hoggy. Then this granny jumper. I like this a lot. The big circles. I would actually copy them colours too. <laughs> I wonder how many people actually copy colours from designers. Like do you copy colours or are you more of a I would choose my own colours. I'm quite intrigued by that. This is 4K jumper, like, okay, I love this, one, because it's so 3D and amazing looking, and two, again, the designer looks so chuffed with herself. So next we have two patterns by Hoddy Woodward Designs. Like, I've, she's been on my radar for quite a while. I just think I should take the leap and make one of her things. She's also another designer that, that looks happy with her makes. Like, there's something about that. There are designers out there that look, they're trying to act all serious and like posy. I'm not going to choose them. I'm going to choose ones that look happy and chuffed with what they've made. Must have been on the jumper theme here. There's another jumper. So this is cool because it's crochet, but it's trying to replicate the fair aisle knitting. This far away jumper would be easy. Fair aisle knitted jumper would not be so easy. So I like this because it looks classy and it's trying to replicate the classy knitting. I just like that and honestly I've been knitting for like six years but the easier the pattern the better it is I'm not one of those people that's going to go out and no I'm just not one of those people that's going to go out and get stressed over a complicated pattern okay this is amazing cropped granny jacket Aaron yarn like the colours the pom-pom border the, the boxiness of it everything about this I like she's got the posy picture but then she's got a picture where she's like yes I made this <laughs> This is cool. I remember this. Sunflower bucket hat. So you can kind of see what I like and what I don't like in my library. It's going to be quite easy going through and deleting some. Freya bubble sleeve cardigan? Nah. She's not even wearing it. <laughs> Berry dripped cardigan. Now that is really cool. It's just a crochet cardigan and then she's added the bubbles on separately to make it look like basically you've dipped your arms in berries. Or you've got berries growing up your arms. You very dripped cardigan. Colour splash cardi, now that is cool. Quite a simple stitch, but then the ribbing is granny squares. Is it bee bonnet? Yes, I need to make bonnets. 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 <laughs> so we have that really classy is it bee bonnet. And next we have funky frog hood bonnet. And then I've seen this guy quite a few times. Unbearable hoodie. <laughs> And there's a kids version too. But again, that is a knitted hoodie in Tarsia. Ah. Enid. So, interesting story about this. I remember this. I was watching uh, Line of Mission Rodro and loved the books as a child, loved the film. The film is not good as an adult. <laughs> but Lucy's cardigan is amazing. So I tried to find a pattern for that, but I couldn't. But I found this Enid headband and the flowers are exactly the same as Lucy's cardigan. So I was going to knit it 
in the same colours as Lucy's cardigan. I was talking about these earlier. Kitty couches, I wonder how long that's been on there. To be fair, I found that cats do prefer crochet to knitting. I, if I'm crocheting something and leave it, Eva is on it straight away. But if I'm knitting something, she doesn't really bother. I think because crochet is so 3D and it uses a lot more yarn, so it's squishier, it's warmer. So I really do think if I was to make a crochet couch, she would use it. Chubby Nyan Cat. I literally have zero memory of getting that on my library. I do remember this. This has been on my list for like two years. And every November, I'm going to make this and I never do. So this is a saw doll, <laughs> but a cat version. <laughs> Back cat slouch hat. Look at that designer. She looks so chuffed. Many cat square. So I actually saw this on Reddit way before I could crochet. And I remember I was like, this is what made me want to learn crochet. Cause I was like, I need this. And I never have made it yet. I've even, that's a page pattern, this cushion, but I've got a book with a crochet cat square in it and I've never made it. You must have seen these cat paw chair socks. So next up is this fairy tale tea cozy. The thing about tea cozies, I will say is you don't have to make them tea cozies because they're so unique, intricate, they're so fun. You never see designs like tea cozies anywhere, really. You could sew the sides up, add a base, turn it into an ornament, a teddy, a doorstop. There is a lot more tea cozies. I know this because last year around this time february march i was going mental for tea cozies and then next is this in the mood vest fox tea cozy let's just smash through the tea cozy shall we henry the eighth tea cozy okay let's not smash through that one because i'm obsessed with henry the eighth i find the history of him and everything fascinating so i actually might make a henry the eighth door cozy door cozy i guess it kind of is i might actually make a henry the eighth tea cozy as my door cozy because i I'm obsessed with everything about Henry VIII. Most people never believe the fact that he was thin. He was like an athlete and then he hurt himself and got infected and then couldn't exercise. So he just ate and ate and ate and ate and ate and ate and ate. But that's why he makes a perfect tea cozy now because he's nice and round. Here is a knitting nana tea cozy. So I was going to make this, but make it me. <laughs> so do a little brunette hair, curly yarn, pajama day tea cozy, uh, seed stitched pom pom tea cozy, that's quite boring compared to the other ones that make me smile, isn't it? Cyclist tea cozy. I had to make this. Christmas pudding tea cozy. Now I love this because the pudding isn't brown. Knitting and crocheting and brown is not nice. This is a Mr. Tumnus because I was going, I thought Narnia would be a big massive knitting thing like Harry Potter is, but it's really not. There is not a lot of Narnia patterns and this is the only one I could find that wasn't complicated in Tarsier gloves. Oh. That ribbed scarf at the beginning that was red, maybe that was Mr. Thomas's scarf. Who knows? If you're still here, I heart you sweater. Now this is cute. Those little sleeves with the hearts, the black and white. So that reminds me of, not the bad Netflix one that I even watched the whole thing because I was knitting. <laughs> um, no, it reminds me of the original Charles Adams illustrations. I had the calendar last year and you can't really beat the traditional illustrations, they're amazing. Knitted joggers, yes please. And Dobby's hoodie cardigan, again, yeah the colours are nice and the thing's nice but the, the design is so happy. <laughs> Daisy granny square cardigan, this is like chunky puffy daisies, it's lovely. And the green really makes you feel like you're in a field of daisies. So on tea cozies again, this is a warning sign because I'm going to go more, there's like tons of, I know there's tons now, this is, this is the, this is the, this is the page where I found tea cozies. So this first pattern is drip stopper for tea cozies. Um, Cause you know, the one down and if you hand knit a tea cozy, it happened on my mouse and I was gutted. I mean, it's a tea cozy and it's obviously gonna happen. But when it first happens, it's like, <sighs> put my heart and soul into that. It's a little stopper. So when you pour your tea, it just, it soaks into that rather than going into your design. So this is Queen's 90th birthday tea party. I was planning to make this for her actual birthday. Guess what? I didn't. Little Owl in the Tree tea cozy. Autumn Walk tea cozy. Teapot tea cozy. I lo actually love that with the little banner in case you didn't know it was a teapot. <laughs> Fairy cake tea cozy. Sack of mice tea cozy. Gingerbread house tea cozy. That is a work of art. Mayflower pilgrims tea cozy. So if I was to make this, I would either pitchfork and make them not smile. 
the Nutcracker Tea Cozy. Must have wanted to make a Christmas one. See, I was planning way ahead because obviously I stopped in like March. I was planning my Christmas ones. Dog post and a letter tea cozy, that is so cute. Viking tea cozy, popcorn tea cozy, that popcorn looks really realistic. Stonehenge <laughs> tea cozy. Granny patchwork tea cozy, that's cute because it's loads of tiny little intarsia and the little, that is cute with the little tea cup. That is very cute. Beatrix bunny tea cozy, Susan the sheep tea cozy, mouse in a cup tea cozy, shark tea cozy, granny square tea cozy. Granny Plus Tea Cozy, Mini Day of the Dead Tea Cozy, I Love You Cupcake Tea Cozy, Alice in Wonderland Tea Cozy, there's more. <laughs> Easy Fox Tea Cozy, Yorkshire Rose Tea Cozy, Cat Nap for a Two Cup Teapot Tea Cozy, Owl Pot Tea Cozy, Woolly Mammoth Tea Cozy, Tail of Two Kitties Tea Cozy, Pheasant Tea Cozy, Red Rooster Tea Cozy, Dog Tea Cozy, which is obviously grommet. Owl coffee tea mug cozy. That's not a tea cozy, but it's kind of, yes, on the theme. Folksy tea cozy. Now that is like proper vintage. That is nice. I mean, it's not proper vintage, but they've been inspired by proper vintage. Aran sweater tea cozy. So I've actually seen this in real life in the yarn shop in Annick, and it's, it's much funnier in real life. Coffee and tea DK pot holders. So you're thinking, oh, we're away from the tea cozies now. No, we're not. Highland cow tea cozy. Relaxing in the bath tea cozy. <laughs> that is fun. Bustle sprouts mini tea cozy. Narwhal tea cozy. Lovebirds tea cozy. Tea womb. T-Rex. Oh my God, is that T-Rex okay? Fox tea cozy. Sleeping fox, that's pretty cute. Cupcake tea cozy. Tea pot tank top. Tea time slouch because you thought I must have thought I haven't added enough tea stuff. I must add some more tea stuff. Frog tea cozy, Billy Odd Job tea cozy, Pesky Mouse tea cozy, Summer tea cozy, Fox tea cozy, The World's Easiest tea cozy, Cupcake tea cozy, Tea bag, <laughs> David the Basket Weave tea cozy. Clementine Tea Cozy, Tea Cozy, number 5354, Ice Cream Swirl Tea Cozy, Granny Tea Cozy. I feel like that could be a brilliant spoken poetry if I had a different tone of voice. You'd be glad to know it's all over. There's no more tea cozies. Regina. I think about that quite a lot. I think it would actually be doable. Tulip Cardigan. Now, I love this because of the colour and it just works and I have a lot of dark grey and the Retro Rosie headband. And that is a headband I would wear because of the big bow you can have. I actually made that, as you can see. Oh, the one thing I've made from this entire collection. Snowed in pullover. So this is what I was wanting to make for my Christmas jumper. Gift bow, this is so cool. I feel like you have to give it to the right person because many people wouldn't appreciate that or maybe they would. Kitties on my lap blanket. So from afar, this just looks like a patchwork scrappy blanket but it's cats the tilly bomber so this is a free pattern where you hold four dk's together to make a chunky knit cardigan and it really works i've been thinking about this for ages mr snowman socks october day sweater see i like this because it's kind of it looks like it should be a shawl but it's a jumper it's really fine but fitting but also baggy and it's like it's very 3d i like it Poisoned apple top. So I like the sleeves. I like that it's fitted. I like that this bit's kind of like see-through-ish. Must be like mohair or something. Kitty tube socks. Because look at that picture. No heel spiral socks. So I have a video on socks and how it's okay not to knit them. And now I'm looking at these. I'm like, yes, I'm glad I follow my own advice. And this beginner's rainbow rabbit. That is so cute. Because that is a thing where you never see it in those colours. It's always brown or cream. It looks real. It's weird. Thank you for that flower. This I love, biscuit blanket. So like back in the day, way before cling film existed, people would wrap things in tea towels. And I think that's what that that's trying to say. That is just so cool. That would make such a lovely present with biscuits in, obviously. Pig in a granny square. This was something I got so excited about. I even bought the pattern. God. Okay, fine vest. It's fine, but I can't imagine myself ever making that. Sheep key pendant. <laughs> I just added this. 
because of the eyes. Aaron Garter Stitch Cardigan. And then I tried to knit this. It's a free pattern. I just couldn't understand it. Revival Cardigan. Now, I love this because it's like cardigan at the front and then bam, granny squares at the back. pop at Cardigan colour work. Like, I love this. I love this so much. I have to make this. I think I would do it in brighter colours though. Gingerbread's Cup Cozy. That is like the happiest gingerbread I've ever seen. A knitted hoodie. Oh my God, yes please. In that colour and everything. Chunky Santa hat. So these, these are the hats I made. Autumn Doodle Cup Cozy and she does the Autumn Doodle Cowl. And that was when I was quite ambitious. I was going to knit and around and I was going to do Intagia and I haven't made that pattern. And again, I'm just gonna knit it fat. <laughs> Marja Cardigan, again, that is intense. Crazy cat hat because of those colours and cats and it's slouchy. Okay, this cowl, this is every, I think every knitter knows this kind of pattern. Not the cowl per se, but like the colour chart. You see a lot in knitted work. So this coffee cozy was my first ever, I'm going to do colour work and guess what? I never even made the th thing. Soldana crop. That's there because I went into a yarn shop and I was new to knitting and she was like, oh, that's really easy to knit. So I went home and added it and it's not easy to knit. Cowl's meow reversible cowl. That is cool because it's got yarn on it. How can we not? So this is gritty gravestone. Um, I have made this. So we're on to two things I've made. So not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> No, he has excellent patterns, most are free, and his instructions for sewing up and adding mouths, really good instructions. This sugar skull collar, so I've wanted to make this for ages, but it's a chart and I can't read charts yet, but I think I get the gist of them. I think if I sat down and, and, and tried to learn, I'd get it pretty fast. Rabbit in a carrot sleeping, because why not? Dreamer sweated because of the pockets. I do feel with knitted pockets, if you put things in them, it's going to stretch them and ruin your knitting. Here's a shark cowl. Here is ragdoll scarf, which is obviously a Sally scarf, but that is excellent. It's like spot on. Oogie boogie. I still haven't made anything night before Christmas and I want to. Plague Doctor Amigurumi. So I made this when I was really new to crochet and it looks nothing like that. And I crocheted in black and I was new to crochet. But I finished it. It's basically an egg that looks like the plague mask. Pumpkin scarf. <laughs> I actually love that. Pint koozie. <laughs> I don't know this was here. Fried egg amigurumi. You know how much I love fried eggs now. Why haven't I made that? Bad Naomi. Reindeer hot chocolate. Oh, I love this. I've actually got this printed off. More cat socks. And this I love because it really does remind me of end of world apocalypse films. The average post-apocalyptic girl so often seems to dress without considering the realities of her environment. This pattern is an attempt to provide clothing appropriate to the arid wasteland without, of course, obscuring anyone's scantily cladness. This crop burnoose is worked in a lightweight yarn at a loose gauge for coolness, with a deep hood to protect against glare and sandstorms, and a long tail to keep it elegantly secure. She's so right about the beginning part and the walking dead and the, meet, the people wearing shorts and everything. It's like, what do you, you do? <laughs> this I love, I think, because it's neon. I really want to make something neon. I haven't yet, but I really want to. Mongolia tea. This is really nice. Ruffled collar. So I actually have a pattern for this. I didn't actually have mohair for this. But the pattern was like, okay, go and measure your neck. And I was like, I can't bother doing that. And that was like two years ago. <laughs> So here's Fable Knitwear again with this grey, poofy, sleeved cardigan, which is amazing. Her work is so nice, but it really makes me scared of messing it up. But those sleeves, the detail in the back, the fact it's fitted, but with big sleeves. Her stuff really has an impact. Like You look at it and you're like, wow. This is what I was going on about, the folklore ruffle top. This is when I first found her and that just looks so nice. Teeny tiny bunny. So this is so cute, but it's by Claire Garland and her patterns are really hard. And here we have Innocent Big Knit Smoothies. So these are such fun little knits. I want to make so many and turn them into bunting. There's only one here, but I do have a ton saved on bookmarks like from different websites and things. So these Forest Friend dolls, I found this lady during lockdown because she was making little nurses 
like with like this with little scrubs on and the reason I love this is because they all have their hands in their pockets Hazel the humpback whale so you probably have seen this it's massive really really big I think that's because it's meant to replicate an actual sperm whale it's massive acorn pincushion nice and cute beehive tea cozy you thought we escaped that we haven't beehive egg cozy cactus egg cozy Cornish blue egg cat cozy ice cream treats so I'm really into my beginning knitting now this is when I first like joined Ravelry when I learned to knit these are Amanda Berry she actually does some brilliant patterns Shelby the snail mini mittens guess what last page <laughs> Cassandra egg cozy a Brussels sprout pattern I've actually made this as well so three things I've made so that's my entire Ravelry collection and it's hilarious and also what on earth I've only made three things from that many <laughs> so Homer Simpson hand to back to my Antasia and I'll go from there and this time next year I'll be able to say what I've made and what I haven't made and hopefully I've made more than three. So I've just had a look, there's 40 patterns per page and I have 19 pages. The last one has like only about eight on. So I have about, are you ready? I have about 740 patterns. I haven't included the list of links because that would be like writing a little book. So if you like any of the patterns, let me know in the comments and I'll comment you the link so you can make it yourself. And I also have Lovecrafts, Etsy, Instagram, all the other accounts with more things on, but nowhere near as much as that many. If you dare, how many patterns do you have on your Ravelry? To be fair, there's probably people who have a lot more than me, but also there's probably people who have a lot more than me, but have also made a lot of things in library. So yeah, if you've watched this to the very end, thank you very much because like I say, I never looked through this before I did this video and I was not expecting it to be this long or to have that many patterns. So thank you for staying. Thank you for letting me feel my shame <laughs> of how many patterns I have. Ah, there's knitting and crochet in every room in this house, like a halfway project done in like every room in this house apart from the bathroom. Like, ser I'm not joking, I'm being serious. <laughs> Maybe I'm kind of alright, I don't know what you, what you guys are like, but let me know if you want to, how many patterns you have, how many patterns you've made out of those, and I would, I'm just intrigued to see if I should be feeling the shame, or we can feel the shame together. <laughs> So thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon if I'm not drowning in 700 projects all at once. <laughs> okay, bye.